Evening YouTubers. So, I hope you're having a good one. You remember last time I showed you ST and I configured it and it got a nice uh, set of fonts, uh, nice colours, background, that sort of thing. Now what I said was I was going to do another video on integrating ST into a desktop. Now I'm in Fedora at the moment. Now Fedora is not my mainstay distribution. In fact Debian is. And in fact Gnome is also not my mainstay desktop environment. So what I'm going to do is a little bit unusual for me but maybe a little com more commonplace for you guys or a little bit more useful that is. So anyway uh, what I'm going to do is integrate ST into Gnome on Fedora. Now your mileage might vary on different distributions, different versions of um, Gnome, that type of thing but the instructions should generally apply. And another thing too is I'm only applying this change that I'm about to do to the local user. That's the Nix user account on this particular instance. So the first thing to realize is I actually don't have ST in, well, maybe I do have ST in my path. I have, um, I don't have ST in GNOME itself though. So if I type ST there, I don't have it. So not much good having a terminal emulator open already and uh, needing to uh, type ST in. Uh, another thing too is that not much good uh, having to type Alt F2 and then um, doing ST. The other thing too that I um, failed to mention at the start of this video is I want to also integrate Tmux into it. So maybe let's start on Tmux. Okay, so I have Tmux, okay, and that's great. But if I start a new terminal, unfortunately no Tmux. And Tmux is really good for multiplexing and it's really good if you're in the a real TTY. So what I'm going to do is let's let's put a little bit of bash magic together and get this going on. Okay, so what I need to do is I need to say, so if actually okay so what that's going to do now is each time I open a new terminal I'm going to end up with a tmux session let's test that now bad okay so I've done something incorrectly there uh, line 15 okay there is no line 15 so let's have a look of course, I forgot. Don't forget the the FI, the closing if. So let's do that again. Great. Okay. So so that's the first bit. Okay. And what's great about that is if I go analyst and then I go Control B create, end up with that. If I go uh, Control B next, I can go to the next. Do Control B previous. So it's great. You can just work out Tmux for yourself. I'll probably do another video in future about that. So the next thing is is integrating ST into operations here. Another thing too I want to show you by the way is if I do open another terminal and I've got that setup that I was just talking about um, when I press control D to exit out of the terminal session I'm still all I'm doing is exiting out of Tmux with its shell embedded in it or its set of shells so I still have the host shell and I need to exit out of that so you'll have to press control D a couple of times. Bit of an inconvenience but no big deal and I haven't investigated into options to actually fully kill Tmux. One way might be to kill the process itself uh, upon control D. Anyway, different story. So let's focus now on um, ST. Now what I've done is I'm going to take you to a website and we'll disregard that a little bit there. Now just as a footnote with regard to Tmux is how I learnt of the empty uh, string is just looking at the man page. There was also another site that I went to and it told us about this but obviously go the sources, going to the source is best. So um, that's just the bash reference manual. So let's close those two. Don't need those anymore. So the next thing is um, oh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put uh, st so ls so you can see ST is in my path, but if, if, if it weren't in my path, a couple of things. So if I go RM, I'll type ST in, it's not going to 
work and it's going to provide the option to install it but we already did that by source last time so the next thing is to actually copy st which is this st into bin okay the next thing to consider as well is whether it's actually in your path now if I go echo dollar path it's going to tell me path and I've got this okay now you can have a look at some tutorials online about how to change your path but I recommend if you're going to have some custom installation of software that you actually bring that custom installation of software's path earlier okay so it doesn't there's no conflict uh, within system installed uh, software uh, versus the software that you've installed from source okay so we've just done that now um, so we will be able to go ST and it pulls up and that's a nice little session as you can see we've got the tmux operating within ST as well which is great. When you do it at bash, it ends up following across, doesn't matter what terminal you go into. Um, as long as you're using uh, the born again shell, uh, you'll have no trouble there. So the next thing, uh, okay, is to um, get this desktop file. Okay, so let's bim my sample st.desktop. Now, where did I get the template for that? I'm going to show you that just right now. Okay. Here is a sample, a very basic sample. And I've kind of modified that a little bit. Simple terminal. Okay, so that's the display name. ST is the executable pa um, path, I guess. You could put the full path if you wanted to, but in this case, ST is in my path, so it doesn't matter. Um, icon. Now, I've actually got an icon, and I'm going to show you what happens when you um, do the wrong thing, so to speak. So I'm not going to specify an icon at the moment. And I'm going to copy that. Uh, ST file to a specific location and needs to go in uh, dollar home or local and uh, share applications and there's nothing in there at the moment so that's great so we've just put that in there now if I go start at this point you'll see that there is a generic icon in here we don't want that generic icon now I went to the liberty of having a look online for some creative commons icons and there's this beautiful one here I've downloaded the, both the PNG and the SVG, but for the purpose of demoing this, I'm just going to use the SVG. The PNG should work no problem, but SVG will give you some better scalability should you have different sized icons and whatnot. So the way to do that uh, is I'm going to actually edit uh, this file that we installed in here, and I'm going to drop the commenting off and just to show you what that looks like by the way when you have the wrong the wrong item in there and we end up with a blank one not much job so we actually need to edit that properly and oh didn't mean to do that and we still haven't got the file in there so of course it's blank we need to copy the file over so let's copy Now we're going to copy it into our icons directory, which I went to liberty of creating earlier. So I suggest you create that. And then what I do is there we go. So now what you have is you have the icon there, and if you click on it, beautiful, you get ST. Also, if you want to, you can go Alt F2 and you get another one. Not sure about running suckless directly, like by typing. not going to come up. So that's fine. Another thing to remember too is that if you find that uh, your icon's not being recognized even though you got the right path or GNOME is not showing um, showing the icon at all, nothing at all, uh, what you can do is you can press Alt F2 to bring up the run dialog and press R to restart the GNOME desktop. And then you go in here and you, that's using the start button, uh, the start window button or what people like to call the mod button and then you can type simple and you've got it there. Beautiful. So that pretty much concludes this video. I hope you enjoyed the the more educational side to it. I'll be producing another GNU Plus Linux distribution review shortly so I'm going to leave it right here. I hope you liked that video. If you did please remember to press the like button below and if you'd like to receive more of this content please subscribe and if you want to share it with your friends feel free to share on Facebook, Twitter, whatever it is. Anyway guys,
Catch you later. Bye now.